okay, we're given a cost function and we wanna figure out what value of X is gonna minimize this cost function. And then after that, we're gonna find the minimum cost total. So to get going on this, the first thing we wanna do is calculate the first derivative. So from our cost function, we're gonna go ahead and use the power rule a couple times. So on that first term, the four X, its derivative is gonna be four. The next term, the 36,000 times X to the negative first power, we're gonna bring the exponent down, multiply it by the 36,000 and reduce the exponent by one. So that'll go negative one minus one more makes negative two. And then the derivative of 18,000, a constant is just going to be zero. I'm go not going to put a plus zero at the end. Now we could rewrite this if we wanted to as four minus 36,000 over X to the positive second power, just rewriting without that negative exponent, rewriting it with a positive exponent. Now our critical numbers or critical values will occur whenever either the first derivative is equal to zero or when it's undefined. Now from this, hopefully we can see this is gonna be undefined at X equals zero. If we plugged a, a zero in where X is right now, we'd be dividing by zero and that's not allowed. That critical number or critical value, we don't really care too much about because this is a cost function. We wanna be thinking about how many items we should be producing, X being that number of items. So we're gonna kind of ignore the X equals zero. Instead, let's focus on when is this going to equal zero? So let's go ahead and set the first derivative equal to zero and work on solving this down. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and move the four to the other side. So we'll get negative 36,000 divided by X squared equals negative four. Now we can't solve for X while it's in the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by X squared. This will eliminate the X squared from the left-hand side, leaving us with negative 36,000 equals negative four X squared. And we should be able to make this into a power equation by getting rid of that negative four. Right now it's attached with multiplication. So let's go ahead and use division on both sides and divide by negative four. That'll put X squared on the right-hand side and 9,000 on the left-hand side as I've written. it. To finish this up, to get rid of the power, we're gonna apply a square root to both sides. And I'm not gonna worry about the positive and negative case um, because again, X is the number of whatever we're producing. Now this doesn't work out evenly, unfortunately. It works out to be about 94.868. So we're gonna go ahead and round that to the nearest whole number and say, let's produce 95 items. Okay, so let's classify that. Both of these actually work out to be critical numbers. and places where we may have a maximum or a minimum. Let's look at that 95 and use the second derivative test to double check to make sure it's gonna be where a minimum occurs. So second derivative test. We'll first need to calculate the second derivative. So C double prime of X. And to do so, what I'm gonna do is go back to this first version of the first derivative. So the four minus 36,000 X to the negative second power. The four being a constant, its derivative is gonna be zero. For the second term, we're gonna use the power rule, bring the exponent down in front and multiply negative two times negative 36,000. We'll get 72,000. Reduce the exponent by one and we get negative three. That's equivalent with a positive exponent of 72,000 over X to the positive third power. Now for the second derivative test, we want to substitute, evaluate that 95 into the second derivative. So C double prime of 95 is gonna be 72,000 divided by 95 cubed. Now what we really care about for coming out of this second derivative is whether it'll be positive or negative. Well, in our case, we have a positive value in the numerator and a positive value cubed in the denominator. So overall, this is gonna be positive. What that tells us is this is concave up because a positive value came out of our second derivative. Concave up, it's gonna look something like this, the bottom of a bowl, basically. And that also implies that we're gonna have a minimum. 
Now that would be switched. If it was a negative that came out, I would be concave down and you would get a maximum. Okay, so 95 is the value we really care about. Next, let's use that value and figure out what the minimum cost is going to be. And I know we could be a little bit more accurate if we use some decimals along the way there or plugged in square root of 9,000, but let's just use 95. All right, so the minimum total cost is going to be when we evaluate the cost function. I just copy this down from above and plug in 95. So 4 times 95 plus 36,000 times 95 raised to the negative first power plus 18,000. After we get the calculators out, maybe evaluate all this. This is going to be 18,700. $58.95 for our minimum total cost. All right, hope this helps out. Um, we, with finding uh, the second derivative and using the second derivative test, that's just double checking to make sure it's actually a minimum at that um, critical number. Sometimes you can get away without doing that, but it's, it's really good to be confident that it actually is gonna be a minimum and you didn't find a maximum on accident. All right, hope this helps, good luck.